You're going to have to sing with me tonight. We're the singers tonight, brother. Praise <laughs> God. And if you ladies in the back, all four of you, Pat, uh, if you guys can sing in too, and Sister Anita, praise God. Let's grab a songbook tonight. Brother John, there's some songbooks. Grab a songbook and let, let's sing a song. It's one we sing often in this church and elsewhere too. Page 120. How many people victory know that we Jesus. have victory Amen. in our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 Thank you, you know, there is no such thing as maybe or if or, you know, uh, we're not we're not <laughs> doomsayers. We're not going to talk negative. But you know what? We have victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been preaching this. The Bible says, and, and Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Almighty God. We are the church of the living God. You and I are the church of the living God. So you know what? When the gates of hell come against us, you know what we can do? We can stand up in the name of Jesus and push the gates back. Amen. I believe that. How many people believe Amen. that? Amen. I believe that, praise God. Amen. We don't have to accept what the devil, Sister Jackie, dishes out. You know what? We've taken too much. We've taken too much. Moses went to Pharaoh and he was guided by, by our Lord uh, God Almighty. And he said, you know what? Let my people go. Yeah. Let them go. We need to stand up and say, devil, let our children go. Let our children go. That's we have to start speaking it. Amen. Yes. Speaking and believe it. If we hear the truth enough, we'll start to believe it, praise God. Let our people go. Two people died indirectly that we knew because of drug overdoses. One was Sister Nina's cousin, 30 years old, in Indiana, died because of drug overdose. The other one was Brother Corey's brother in his mid-20s, died of a drug overdose. You know what? Drugs are just from hell itself. Everybody in here has a family member, a loved one that has suffered from it or is suffering from it. And you know what? I bind that spirit right now in the mighty name of yes. Jesus Christ. I bind it right now. Yes, Not Jesus. just the drugs, the alcohol too. Some people think weed's okay or alcohol's okay. You know what? Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's okay. Amen. If it's going gonna, if it's gonna to control my mind, if it's going to control and warp my thinking a little bit, it's not okay. Amen. You know what? We need to bind that right now. We need to bind it. And like the sister was saying earlier and her son that was in here about this COVID thing, it's for real. But you know what? They're not letting anything bother them. We can still stand up. There's all kinds of diseases that will take our life out there. That's High right. blood pressure, cancer of all types. You know what? We still function. We come in the name of Jesus Christ and say, we say I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. And if I move, it's because I'm moving, not because Satan's trying to move me. I'm moving forward because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm a Amen. soldier of God Almighty, and you are too. So let's stand up today. Let's proclaim victory in Jesus Christ. Page 120, praise God. If you're able to stand, stand. If you can't stand, that's all right. Now, I'm not a singer. But I'm going to start us out here a little bit. And uh, Lord, have mercy on us. I want you girls and <laughs> Brother John, help me out here. Uh, I, 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 if I start singing, they're going to be shutting off Facebook already. They're going to be shutting it down. Nobody's no, going to be not. watching tonight. Praise God. Amen. I heard, heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave us life from Calvary to save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious love's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming love, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again. And calls the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. 
He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Amen. I don't want to do that again. Praise God. <laughs> Who's got a song tonight that they can share with us? Anyone at all tonight? Uh, Sister Pat, you got a song? Who's got a song tonight that they can share with us tonight? I'll say. Go ahead, sis. Let, let me get you something here, sister, so we can all hear you. Thank you. Here you go, Sister Jackie. God bless you. Thank God for another day. I yes. thank him for raising me up. Yes. And causing me to walk in straight and narrow way. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. But truly, I don't look back. He said, don't look back. He said, Pat. Bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Face yes. your face like a flint. Yes. And I mean, I'm going to do it for God because he's my rewarder. Yes. He's my deliverer. Yes. He's Amen. my God. He's my all in all. He bought me out of many things. Yes. He bought me out of the wheelchair three or four times. Yes. I thank God for his love. I yes. thank you for bringing me through, and I know he's going to do more for all of us if we continuously in prayer yes. and fast. Amen. Fast yes. is one of the best things to break a lot of things in your life. If you want to be delivered, many times I have fasted many times for God. I'm not uh, up here boasting about it, but it is good for your soul. Yes. It is good for you. Yes. Well, praise God. I, all of that, I'm going to try to sing he's God. For you, brother, over there, sitting in that white chair. <laughs> well, he's God on that platform. Yes, he's God back at the door. He's God in the amen corner. He's God all over the floor. I know God is God. And God don't ever change. I know God. Jesus is his name. Well, he's got all over the ocean. Yes, he's got all over the sea. He's got all over creation. He's got all over me. I know God is God. And God don't ever change. I know God is God. And he always will be God. Yeah. 
first up 10,000 to my soul. He said, when y'all asleep, my people, when y'all asleep, it's time to rise up and give God the glory. Give God the praise. Praise breaks every fetter. Praise breaks everything. If you're going through some things, just tell away and pray and praise him. Amen. They can yes, sing. Hallelujah. Now, you all don't, don't have to jump at one time. We'll let everybody have a turn here. Praise God. <laughs> Who, who's got a song tonight that they can sing with us? <laughs> Praise God. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. He wants you to sing Glory Prepare. I know. Let's do Amazing Grace. <laughs> Where would we be without Amazing Grace? <laughs> Amen. John, you know Amazing Grace, don't you? <laughs> let, let, let's let's all open, open our songbooks to 57, Amazing Grace. Now I'm going to let somebody else lead. I don't want to lead this one. Uh, hallelujah. I, I, let, I let the other one praise God. Thank you, sweet Señor. Hallelujah. You want to lead it, John? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hand. I'm going to give you a mic. Praise God. Glory. Alive and well, just like Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's alive and well, living in me to tell the world that he is the same. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus is alive and yeah. well. Yeah. 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 Sing with me. He's alive and well. He's, He's alive, alive and well. well. Living in me to tell. Living in me to tell the world that he is the same. The world that he is the same. Gloria a Dios. Voy a tomar el, eh, el versículo de la mañana de Mateo capítulo 7, eh, donde hablaba de la palabra de Dios que dice que funda tu casa sobre la roca. Uh, my house, I put in, in foundation in la rock yes. is Jesus. Amén. Y eso es la de ahí voy a sacar Amen. ese coro. Yes. Amén. Gloria Amen. al Señor. Aleluya. Yes. Dice así. Funda tu casa sobre la roca que Jesucristo te ayudará. Funda tu casa sobre la roca que Jesucristo te ayudará. Que vengan ríos que soplen vientos pero tu casa no caerá, que vengan ríos, que soplen vientos, pero tu casa no caerá, funda tu casa sobre la roca, que Jesucristo te ayudará, funda tu casa sobre la roca, que Jesucristo te ayudará, que vengan ríos, que soplen vientos, pero mi casa no caerá, que vengan ríos, que soplen vientos, pero tu casa no caerá. 
casa no caerá. Funda tu casa sobre la roca que Jesucristo te ayudará. Funda tu casa sobre la roca que Jesucristo te ayudará. Que vengan ríos, que soplen vientos, pero tu casa no caerá. Que vengan ríos, que soplen vientos, pero tu casa no caerá. You know what? We may not understand the word, but the spirit is the same spirit. How many people understand that? Amen. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Page 57. Let's do Amazing Grace. Who's going to lead us tonight? Let's do Amazing Grace, everyone. Let's sing Amazing Grace tonight. Someone lead us tonight. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. No. <laughs> Come on, brother. I don't want to do the... Praise God. Page 57. Open up your song books. I want everybody to sing it tonight. Praise God. Everybody there? Page 57. Page 57. I don't want to sing alone. I don't want to sing alone. You want the presence of God? Amen. He'll come. You just Amen. start singing about him. Just Amen. like our sister said. You want to start feeling better? You want to start being feeling cleaned up inside? Just start praising God. Amen. The devil will run. Yes. Amen. Glory a Dios. Will, yeah, will flee. Just start praising the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing grace here. Uh, how sweet the sound. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna, I sing it kind of slow, so uh, we're just going to maybe slow it down from <laughs> that's all right, uh, brother. the up tempo that we just that's, had that's here. All right. But uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot here. And... Uh, it's been uh, good singing everything a cappella here today. Amen. Uh, it's just, it's different. It's different, yeah. but yet, it's uh, you can see it's a little bit more heartfelt and intense. Yes. With, uh, yes. Out the piano and the guitar. Uh, not that they're not great parts of the ministry in, in the church, but uh, sometimes you can see heart. it's okay without them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, let's sing uh, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. What's life? Praise 
Praise God. 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 Send it with sanctuary. Gloria Jesus. Sister Alleluia. Sandra, lead us a little bit. Start us out now. Help finish. Yeah. De lo que saben que los Señor. Prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, try and true. Sometimes, you know, the, the musical instruments are great, and we hear the music, and we can get into the moment and the spirit, but sometimes without those, or they're just using our natural voices. And if you think about the many times that Jesus himself was out there with his disciples, I'm, I'm sure they sang praises. I'm sure they sang many a time. And uh, I think I was reading one time that the truck didn't show up with the amps and the guitars and the drums, like when you're going to do the Sermon on the Mountain. But you know what? They still preached, they still taught, they still sang praises unto God. Yeah. You know what, it's nice to have all that. But when we don't, the problem we have in this world today is we worry about what we don't have. Listen to what I'm saying. We worry too much about what we don't have. We need to start doing the most of what we do have. Amen. Use what God has given us. Yes. Use the people. Today, you know, I, I come in tonight and say, well, we're not going to have any singers here. And uh, God had to rebuke me. We are going to have singers. We're the singers. Amen. We're the singers. And we're blessed. Sister Jackie sings us a song. Amen. And Sister Anita started. And uh, Sister Sandra started. <laughs> we all sang. And, and, and Brother John blessed us with songs. Praise Amen. God. Amen. You know what? We can, we, can, we can do whatever we want. You know what? It may not be a joyful noise to somebody else. But, but you know what? We're making Jesus. a joyful noise to our Lord and Savior. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do the most with what God has given you. That's a message itself. Yeah. Do the most with what God has given you. Praise God. Yeah. I felt good about this morning's service. It was on that rock, like the sister yes. was saying there before she sang her song. You know, uh, we're built on a, a solid foundation. We're built on the rock. Amen. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. If you will, get your Bibles out tonight. Praise God. Look them up so everybody can, or the Lord can see it anyhow. And as I always say, there's no dust on these Bibles because we use our Bibles. And repeat after me with boldness and conviction in your heart. This is... This is my Bible. Bible. This is the truth, the, truth, truth, the whole truth, the whole nothing truth. but the truth. Nothing but the truth. It's the invaluable word of God. Invaluable Jesus word. is the word. Jesus this is, is the word. good news, the good, good report, the, the sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. This, is this is what I believe in. Stand on it. Live by and trust in it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Si, Señor. Solo en tu palabra, Señor. How many people know that God is in the house? Amen. Amen. God is in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking just about this house made of brick and clay and this wood house. and mortar. He's in this, this house, house tonight. Amen. So if you come here tonight and you are a Christian, guess what? You brought him with you tonight, praise yes. God. Because God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's in a place that we call Holy Land. 
heaven. He's right near you, next to you, in you, and all throughout you. Praise God. Years ago, I would see these ministries locally here in the Elyria and Lorraine area. And some of them, Sister Jackie, 25 years ago, were doing quite well. Some still aren't. Some aren't. Times have changed. But you know what? God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We change. And just because things may not be the same as what it was 25 years ago doesn't mean we have to do anything different. You know what? God has called us to be a witness to him. He's called us to preach the word of God. Amen. But sometimes we go into different areas and we want to do something different. Let's, let's try to invent the will. We don't need to invent the will. People have been preaching, preaching the gospel for over 2,000 years. We need to continue to do that. And for those that have an ear to hear, they'll hear. If they don't have an ear to hear, they're not going to hear. But you know what? Tonight, I'm going to tell you not to take any credit for whatever is happening. Years ago, I, Sister Anita, I would hear people say, look what we did in our ministry. Mm -hmm. Look what our church is doing. And I know that we take pride sometimes when we do things here, whether we're feeding someone or giving out the rummage sale, the nursing homes and all that. But you know what? We have to be careful with our words. Right. We have to be careful with our words. You know what? It's not our church. It's not even the church down the road. It's God's church. And we have to remember that. I remember a young man went to Michigan one time. He said, we went up there, and, and there was about 10 or 11 people that I, I had an altar call, and I put my hands on them. They all came up, and some got delivered, and, and, and most of them up there, every one of them, he said, but then for most, every one of them got saved. Praise God. I saved them all, and I started to think, oh, no, Lord, you didn't, you didn't save anybody. Oh, Jesus. You didn't save anybody. You know what? We cannot heal. We cannot save. We cannot deliver. We can't even encourage. We can't even help. It's Him working through us. Amen. We have to remember all power belongs to Him. All glory belongs yes. to Him. Amen. He'll use us as His mouthpiece. He'll use us as His hands and feet. But we have to understand that it's not us. Amen. I said a while back to Sister Mary, she was talking about, she goes, when I'm gone, she goes, uh, if God wants that ministry to cook, he goes, can you continue? I said, yes, it will. I said, if I was gone tomorrow, if God took me tomorrow, you know what? God would have somebody else here running this church as a pastor. Listen to what I'm saying today. We have to understand it's not us. He needs willing vessels. He needs people to be a willing vessel, praise God. But you know what? There's a lot of people that are willing out there. Today, we didn't have our singers. Tonight, we didn't have our musicians. But you know what? We came. We, we stood up. We got in the gap. We filled the gap. We, we, we came up to make a standard and say, you know what, you, I'll sing tonight. I'll give praise to him tonight. I may not have the best voice, but we gave praise. Hallelujah. All the ones that did sing had a good voice today. Hallelujah. We made joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. And God has called us to be that witness. He's called us to stand in when we need to stand in. And he's equipped you with a voice. But Brother Ray, I'm not like you. I'm not like the other people. I don't know all the scripture. You don't have to know anything. The Bible tells us the Holy Ghost will fill our mouth. Yes, when you yes, need to he speak, will. he'll tell you what to speak. But we have to remember, it's not us. We never want to get to the situation, look what I did. Look what we did. Look what our church did. Our church didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. God worked through us. It's all about him. Amen. All we are is willing vessels. I remember a number of years ago, there was a young man that, man, just preaching, had his heart into it, was preaching, and I remember one time I had to speak and say, you know what, God told me to tell you something, and he woke me up, Brother John, at 3 o'clock in the morning, this is the truth, I was living in Brunswick at the time, I was not pastoring, I had no, I, I didn't go to church up here or anything, and you know, it, it was just, man, God laid it in my heart to go and tell this man to humble himself. To humble himself under the mighty hand of God. Because he was getting to the point of being too halty, too, 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 look what I can do, look what I, how I can preach, look, look at the people that are coming to see me and all that. And God just dealt in my heart to go speak to him. And I figured, yeah. Lord, I don't want to do this, Sister Jackie, because if I did it, man, it would just open up a whole can of worms. And I remember talking to some elders in the church at that time and they said, Do it. I said, I don't want to do it. Yeah. God told you to do it, you do it. Yeah, but you're aware of what God told me. Can't you do it? And they go, no, you need to stand on the word of God, and you need to go explain this to this yes. individual. Yes. Hallelujah. Gloria and I did. And they did receive it well. 
at that time for a moment. See, we can't take any glory for ourselves. I mentioned a lot of pastors' names earlier with churches, and I did that deliberately. I said Brother DJ's church and Brother Monday's church and Brother Robert's church and, 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 and so on and so forth. But how many people know that it's not their church at all? Amen. It's the church of the living God. That's right. That's right. It's the church of the living God. Glory. Sometimes people say, Pastor, aren't you afraid about your people? You know, you've actually encouraged them to go to another church, to go to another service. Uh, and I said, I, that doesn't bother me at all. It never has and never will. Because you know what? Everybody that's here, you don't belong to me and I don't belong to you. We belong to God. Amen. We're a child Amen. of God. We have to remember yes. that. Yes. So every yes. place that is preaching the word of God that's a true Christian church, that's where we ought to be at. Whether it be here or elsewhere. Many of you go to other churches and that's all right. Nothing wrong with that at all. But we've come together because the church is open at this day and time, at this hour, to say, let's praise him. Let's sing songs of praise to him. Let's sing songs of joy to him. And let's give him the glory that is rightfully his. Amen. Because the bottom line is, when I take glory for myself, or for the church, that's when I'm going to have a fall. Amen. That's All right. glory belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share something with you tonight. Turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 15. <coughs> Thank you, sweet Jesus. Amen. Chapter 15 of the Gospel of John, starting with verse 1. Say amen when you're there. Amen. The words that I'm about to speak are written in red in most of your Bibles. And that represents Jesus speaking, as most of us are aware of. But how many people know that every word that is in this Bible is of God? Amen. Every word is of God. Oh, yes. I had one gentleman tell me, you know what? I don't like what Paul teaches sometimes, but I like what Jesus taught. Well, really, there's, there's nothing contrary to one or the other. But you know what? Whether it's the first word in Genesis and the last amen in Revelation... Every word is written and inspired by God Almighty. That's what we have to understand. But in this particular situation, this is Jesus speaking. Listen to what he says here. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taketh away. This morning, with this morning's message, I said we are going to be known by our fruits. We're going to be known by our fruits. Whether it be good or bad, we will be known by our fruits. And verse 2 continues saying, Every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. How many people have been purged in here a little bit? Clipped a little bit? Pruned a little bit, if we can say that too. 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I want you to say, I can do nothing without Christ. I can do Amen. nothing without Christ. You know what? We can't do anything without Jesus. There's that song, I can't do anything without him holding my hand. You know what? We can't have a sermon. We can't sing. We can't preach. We can't teach. We can't be a witness without Jesus, without the presence of God Almighty. You know, I don't care who it is. You, you, can, you can stand up and know the scriptures and, and know the word of God front and back and everything else, but you don't have God in you. If you don't belong to him, it's just a bunch of words. I, I shared this story with you many a time back in the early 60s. There, there was an actor, uh, Charles Lawton, who was a very articulate speaker. And, and a lot of the big churches back then, and especially in New York area, would have him come in. And he would open up the Word of God. And, 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 and many people didn't even know if he was a Christian back at that time. But he was just a great performer, a great speaker, an actor. And he would open up the Word of God. And they said, man, you could hear a pin drop. People were amazed how his voice would resonate throughout these big cathedrals. <clears throat> 
And so at that time, the Life Magazine, Look Magazine, Post Magazine, and some of the local other newspapers uh, were up there too, not just the magazines, and they're snapping pictures and taking pictures of him. And he goes up to, to he's introduced by the pastor of that church. He goes up there and he opens up the Word of God and he, he starts to speak the Word of God. He starts to speak it. And they said everybody was in <coughs> awe, amazement on how this man could speak. But a little old man wanted the opportunity to end the service. And they said that as he got up there, you could see he was very fragile. And he was skinny and old and got up there, not too much hair on his head. And he opened up the Word of God and they said as he started to speak, you could tell that he had limited education and he stuttered over some of his words and he wasn't real plain spoken when he was speaking his words. But they said there was something different with that little old man. He gave all glory to God that day. And they said there was a contest. The great Charles Lawton would have lost. So somebody from one of the magazines went to Mr. Lawton and said, Mr. Lawton, you did a marvelous job here in church today. And, you know, we're getting pictures taken of you and all that. But this little old man, he came up and blew you away out of the water. How do you account for that? And Charles Lawton said this, being true with truth. You know, there's a difference between that little old man and me. I came in for the publicity, and I knew the script. I'm an actor. I knew the script very well. But that little old man, he knew the author of the book, Amen. and he gave glory to God. Amen. There's a difference. Yes. Knowing the author and giving him glory. Not speaking of him, but knowing him intimately. And giving him glory and giving him praise where praise and glory is due. Without me, you can do nothing. Everybody in this church, in one form or another, has a ministry outside. It may be to be a witness, to edify, to encourage, to preach. We had a young lady in here before service started. Her name is Tara, and she's a Christian, and she has her ministry beginning, and we're going to pray for her and as we pray for all the churches. <coughs> but as Er and I were speaking the other day, it's not anything that her ministry is doing or our ministry is doing or your ministry is doing. It's what God is doing through us. Without Him, we can do nothing. And 6 says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as the branches and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Listen to this in 7. This is powerful. If you abide in me, in other words, if you live in me, if you live in me, and my words abide in you, in other words, if you live in me, and my words live in you. Amen. In other words, my words are alive inside of you, Brother Charlie. Yeah. My words are alive in you, and you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. That's a condition, people. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that you may joy, that my, my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No greater love hath no man than this, that a man like lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command of you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you.
These things I command you that you love one another. Praise God. <coughs> I preached many a time up here that we're never alone. If you will, I want you to turn for a moment to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we may not have a jump and shouting service tonight, but that's all right, praise okay. God. Okay. I'm going to tell you, we always talk about God being with us. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end of time, until the end of the age, until the end of the world. I read this probably for the first time, Brother John, probably 14, 13, 14 years ago. And this got me excited because this was long before I started to minister or preach. And I said, God, I know you've called us to be a, a witness, a great witness for you throughout the entire world. But, Lord, sometimes I don't think I can do it by myself. I came across this scripture. And, and when I tell you, getting into the word of God will just come to life to you. You can read a scripture and see it a hundred times. And, and it doesn't really hit you the way that it should hit you. Then one day, it'll just slap you in the face. Right. Then a year later, you read it again, and Sister Jackie it slaps you in the face again. You need to get a deeper revelation. Listen to who's working with us here. 2 Corinthians 6 1. We then, as workers, say workers, workers. together, say together, together. Okay. with him, say with okay. him. Okay. Who's him? <coughs> Jesus. 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 We then, as workers, together with Jesus. As workers together with him, as workers together with the master, as workers together with our Lord and our Savior. See, we're not by ourselves. Brother Warren, we have a worker that's working with us, and that's Lord God Almighty. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. I want you to go down to 14 in that same chapter. We have to be careful sometimes, Sister Peggy, who we surround ourselves with. Jesus went out into the world. He preached to the world. He ate with the sinner man and woman, and we ought to do the same. We need to reach out to them. But we have to be careful also with our associations, and we spend a lot of time together. The Bible also tells us that bad company corrupts what? Good moral. But listen to what it says here in 14. Be ye not equally or unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Praise God. I want you to turn to Matthew 11, if you will. Matthew 11, 28. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Many of us these last few months at many of the different churches have been tired. Sickness has been running throughout the churches. And sometimes we just need to feel that we need a little help sometimes. And we cry out to our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's always there to help us. He's our co-worker. He's working alongside by side with us. But listen to what our Lord says here in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all ye labor. And are heavy laden. And I will give you what? Rest. rest. You need rest. He is our rest. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, He's our Sabbath. He is our rest. And listen to what it says here in 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I've shared with you many a time, we're not by ourselves. If, if Brother John got up here and we got Brother Jose up here, and we put on those yokes. You ever see two oxes or even two mules yoked together? Mm -hmm. Well, we put them together. Well, here's what happens. They're going to have to kind of go together. Or they're not going to move at all. Yes. But see, here's what's good. When you're weak, guess who's yoked to you? God Almighty Amen. Jesus is. You, Jesus. And you know what? He'll pull us along to keep us going. He'll, he'll keep us moving itself. We're never by ourselves. I think that's the hardest thing for Christians to understand. Lord, where are you? And what God is saying to you, I'm with you right now. I've never left you. And my dwelling place is inside of you. My spirit is in you. My spirit is upon you. I don't know why that is. Every other week I hear someone saying, I think God's left me. You know what? God never left us. 
You know what? God doesn't change. But you know what changes? Our mind and our heart. This is what changes. We get some stinking thinking. We get a stinking thinking in our heart too. And we feel, I'm all by myself. God's not with me anymore. You know what? If you're a child of God and you're living for God and doing the right things, you may go through what we call a dry spell, but it's only a spell. It's only for a season. God is always with you. Amen. We're yoked to Him. You know what? He's not just my yoke. He's, he's, he's the one that's going to pull me along. He's the one that's going to push me along. And He's my fellow co-worker too, praise God. Because without Him, I can't do anything. Amen. Without Him, I'm going to fall. Without him, I'm going to mess up. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes that a two-strand rope is better than one. And three is even better. And we've talked about that many a time. Get a praying brother or sister to pray with you, to be with you. But you know what? Sometimes you may not have that brother around. Sometimes you may not have that sister around. But you know who you have around all the time? God. And you know what? If I got God and myself and we're together, guess what? Nothing's going to break that rope. Nothing's going to break that rope. I remember King David when he went out to find the enemy with his troops and all that. They left their village behind. And, and it says the enemy came in and, and took the women and the livestock and the kids and all that he owned. And when they came back, they found everything was gone. And it said that they were in such distress, they started to rip their clothes and cry out in pain. Maybe you've been that way at one time or other. You just wanted to scream and, and rip your clothing and cry out because of the pain that you're going through. In this case, the family is gone. Everything is gone. But you know what? They started to turn on David. David, if we weren't with you trying to look for the enemy, we would have been here. We could have protected them. David had no one. He had nobody to encourage him. But the Bible says, the Bible says, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you don't have anybody else. You pick up the phone and your phone doesn't work. You try to call somebody 3 o'clock in the morning and they don't answer the phone. You try to talk to your closest brother or sister or even pastor or minister, and they're not available. What do you do? You got Jesus because he's a fellow co-worker with you. You're yoked to him. You are one with him. You're, you're tied up to him, praise God. And he does not live afar off. We cry out to heaven today. I'm, when we're singing sanctuary, I'm lifting my hands up and looking up. But you know what? He's not just there, but he's also here too. Sometimes we just need to put our arms around and say, Lord, thank you, Lord, for preparing me to be a sanctuary for you, holy and pure, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Not how easily we forget. God has never left you. God has never forsaken you. His promises are what? Yes, yes and, and amen. Amen. And one promise is this. I'll be with you until the end of time. I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. If he's with us 24-7, Brother Gene, how can we not be conquerors or more than conquerors to him that loves us? Amen. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Lord. But we cannot do anything without our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, But he that is joined into the Lord is one spirit. Amen. Ephesians 4, 4, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. In Ephesians 2, 22, In whom ye are built together, say, I'm built together, I'm built together. for inhabitation of God through the Spirit. I can go on and on. I have scripture after scripture after scripture. But tonight, this morning we talked about being founded on that rock, which Amen. is Jesus Christ. Amen. If we're founded on that rock, and we're truly His, and we understand that we can't do anything without Him, See, I can't build the rock. The rock's already there. It's him. And we're building a house together. See, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. He was just talking about heaven. He's also talking about this dwelling place. This dwelling place. 
because this is where he's preparing it. Amen. The reason why I want love that song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, Amen. he's working on this Amen. to get this house in order. As far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Lord. Amen. And sometimes it isn't just the home that we live in. It's this. Yes. As far as me and this house, Amen. this Hallelujah. house, this house, yes. we're going to serve the Lord. Praise God. Glory a Dios. You know, we Glory ought to sing that song tonight uh, when we go home tonight. And before sleep, I do at night wake up. And the kids know it by heart at our house. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. It's the only one I'll sing out loud in front of everybody. Those few little verses. Lord, prepare me. To be a sanctuary, Amen. holy and pure. Amen. And I do it because I love him. I want him to have sí, a habitation that he can Amen. be proud of, praise God. To not have Gloria. any unholy thing be there. Amen. Sister Peggy, have I perfected it? No. But I'm striving to perfection. Amen. Peggy, I'm Amen. striving to perfection. Amen. Jackie, I'm striving. Brother Charlie, I'm striving. You are all striving. Amen. Keep Gloria. striving. Keep going. And remember, Peggy, we ain't alone. We got God Almighty. Amen. Yoked to Him. He's yoked to us. Gloria a Dios. And you know, we get stubborn. And you, you, I don't know if you've ever seen, I grew up in the country. Some of you grew up in the country, I'm sure, and elsewhere. You ever see when you have but two animals, normally they'll go hand in hand together. But you ever see a stubborn mule not want to be pulled or something? Alabado sea Jesus. Okay. Now, my grandfather used to go and get, he'd get a stick and slap there behind sometimes uh. and get him going. But you know what? The other one, if he's a little bit more stubborn, he's going to pull the other one along, and the other one starts to go along with the thing. So remember, we're yoked to him. So when we can't move forward anymore, he might have to drag us a little bit. And guess what? Some of us look like we've been dragged through something. He is dragging us. He is moving us, praise God. But we're never, never, never alone. I'm not kidding. I have about 12 more scriptures to go through, but God's saying not to go through those, so we won't. About God being with you and in you. You know, years ago in the Old Testament, we'd hear about the saints, the prophets, being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Well, praise be to God, on the day of Pentecost, that spirit fell, not just for some that God chose. Uh -huh. But you know what? He called us out of darkness, and he chose us all. Poderoso. And that spirit Amen. fell upon each Amen. and every Jesus. one of us, praise God. To have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of us. To have a new birth. New DNA. Spiritual DNA. Praise God. Because He did something for us. He died on Calvary for us. Forgave our sins. And we did something. We accepted Him as Lord and God. Of our life. If you've done those things. If you've done that. You're a child of the living God. And as I said about the. That little old man reading the word of God is not knowing the scriptures. It's knowing the one that wrote the scriptures and giving him full glory. And coming to an understanding, we can't do anything. We cannot do anything. Just be obedient to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a couple of our people in a few weeks. They want to go down to the park down here and sing some songs and pray for those that come along to uh, see them at the park. And I'm going to encourage that. Remember Brother Scott? Jesus. Starcher? Brother Scott, when he first started coming here a while back, and uh, he said, I have an option to go down to the park. And he actually asked if it was okay since he was coming here. I said, that's fine. You have my blessing. He went down to the little park, Veterans Park, to preach to the park. I don't remember Tabitha saying, Dad, what if nobody listens to him? You know, it's not like you're, you're publicizing. What if nobody listens to him? And, and Brother Scott, and I'm not making fun of him, he has MS. And he can't speak real plain, as some of us know. I have a, I have a pastor cousin of mine, or uncle of mine, man. He, he's born without a, a, a palate in his mouth, and nobody can understand him hardly. But, man, when he preaches the word of God, you can feel the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like that song the sister sang. But here's what I told my daughter Tabitha. I said, it doesn't matter. If only the squirrels listen to him, that's all right. But he did have some people listen as he was doing that for the weeks to come. Because that's what God asked him to do in his heart. And if God has asked you to do something, just be obedient. Hallelujah. You don't have to have 20 people in the park listening to you. You don't have to have 50 people. You don't have to have 20 people in church. Just be obedient to what God has told you to do. Yes. And do it not for your glory because he wasn't doing it for his glory. He was doing it for the glory of God. Amen. And praise God. Sometimes nobody was there. 
But a few times there were people there, Sister Peggy, that listened to him. And then he got excited a few weeks after that. He said a couple of them came back and listened again. Yeah. He'd go down there. I think it was Monday or Tuesday evening, one of the two. Tuesday, and he, he preached the word of God to those that would listen. I'm not telling us to do that unless you're led by God. That's right. But what if all of us did something like that and were led by God? There's Jackie on this side of town. There's John on this side of town. There's Charlie on this side of town. There's Warren on this side of town. There's Jose on this side of town. There's Anita on this side of town. And if someone heard the word of God and it touched them. You know, Jesus, when he called his disciples, a couple came together. But he also called some of them one at a time, too. It's nice to preach the word of God and get three to 5,000 saved, but wouldn't it be nice just to get one saved? Amen. One person Amen. saved. One person Amen. to know Amen. that there's a man that really is not a man. He's Lord God Almighty, and his name is Jesus, who bore our sins and went to death for us. Well, thank God that same one that went to death is risen, and he's sitting on the throne right now. Praise God. He's our Redeemer, our Lord, our Savior. Will you all stand tonight? Thank you, sweet Jesus.